when you speak about uh, war or any uh, any uh, methods or tools the uh, the 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 disconnect or the lack of understanding between the lack of if at all there is a lack of synergy between we academics or we researchers and the 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 practitioners or the application side of it uh, sometimes we miss the realities sometimes we miss the reality see it, it might be you know you and i can sit inside the computer when, can i can we sit inside uh, in front of a computer and we can develop a great uh, solver you know using C, c plex or very sophisticated tools we can develop a great solution but if that cannot be applied that that cannot be utilized in the in practice then it is of no good so we must understand what is the uh, what is that that the industry or the practitioner is lacking if something is lacking from the railways railways can do uh, much better in terms of customer centricity when i say customer centricity the customer centricity need not be always the public or the ridership you know there is a whole lot of freight traffic also there is a whole lot of engagement with a whole lot of other stakeholders also the stakeholder centricity is something that they can improve upon so when you and i as academicians when we are developing solutions for them we must understand where we can bridge that gap for example uh, fca is a customer food corporation of india is a customer of railways so what are the requirements of food corporation of india which are not effectively met by railways can you and i sit and develop the solutions for that um of late you know uh, uh, m- m- more than research as uh, publications or whatever my consultancy work and teaching interest with the transportation in- institutions and organizations in the country has significantly gone up and um, uh, i work uh, you know uh, i i interact very closely with the uh, ministry of railway and in recent times with the ministry of ports and shipping as well and uh, uh some of the key things which i would as a personal philosophy uh, i would like to do in terms of my uh, professional portfolio is you know the, we have to be relevant to the society we have you know when we say transportation and logistics we have to do work we have to do research we have to uh, provide or uh, develop solutions which are useful to the community and where we are when i look at railways indian railways i look at railways as one whole organization where you can apply a to z of management whatever you are trying to look at see whether it is operation whether it is scheduling whether it is finance accounts hr marketing you know people centricity customer centricity uh, ob uh, you know public policy ppps anything that you are looking at you know interactions with the government ethics uh, vigilance a whole lot of thing you can find under a single head and in recent times in recent times when you look at uh, lots of things which happen in our ministries in particular with the railways and with the ministry of shipping and port lots of innovations are happening when i say innovations this is just not about technology innovation uh, this is also about management revolution uh, management innovation and revolution what is relevant to my country which is something that i strongly believe and i strongly am a strong proponent of this somebody else cannot come and dictate me for example i keep saying this if i don't have the hsr technology if i don't have the high speed railway technology i don't have to you know uh, feel so bad about it because that technology innovation is available for a price is available for purchase once if i decide i don't have this technology and this technology would be useful to me i can always purchase i can always procure it for a price but what i cannot do what we cannot do is how i can use or utilize the technology in the context which will be useful to me that is something that we have to create and we have to develop on our own somebody else cannot come and tell me how i should utilize this so this is where i think the role of management the role of policy and to some extent the role of technologists also in the country or for us is very important in that context i think uh, 
some of the work which is done by the ministries, which because I have, you know, I have interacted close with them. I know, uh, I know on a first term basis, some of the things that they that uh, that we do uh, are very very creative, very innovative. Not not exactly from a technology point of view, but in terms of application side. So One thing that I uh, uh, I am uh, re in recent times I'm fascinated is about the uh, you know sequential decision making. I really got fascinated because it it kind of utilizes lots of uh, machine learning uh, decision making etc. See, we know about uh, linear optimization. We speak about non-linear optimization. We speak about uh, uh, stochastic optimization in the sense of you know decision making under uncertainty and all. But even those things have a limitation relevant to applications. You know. Uh, when I say uh, stochastic optimization, what kind of uncertainties can I bring into the decision context, the problem? There is also a limitation. So, there is something called as a sequential optimization is something that, you know, I read recently, I do not know how much I am going to do. Uh, one of my uh, interns is kind of working on that, but, uh, 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 you know, like uh, at each point of time from, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it, is, uh, it is a combination of dynamic optimization you know as well as uh, stochastic optimization at each at each uh, uh, echelon of decision making you know uh, how many number of decision choices are available how many of those decision choices will i be able to evaluate so that you know i can pick it up as the best option available at, for me at this context and go ahead with the next so this is very important unless otherwise i explore all the decision choices which are available how do i proceed and how do I conclude that how do I converge upon that this is the best decision in practice each decision uh, yields to a infinite number of further decisions so it is sometimes it is kind of you know uh, a researcher is limited in that approach of how much I can evaluate typically traditional conventional researchers what they used to do is they used to take some assumptions in which I am able to limit the number of decisions I have and I I, I have serious reservations against this because when you do some uh, when you do some assumptions the fundamental problem is you are restricting the problem and you are choosing what is easier for you or what is feasible for you but that is not what the industry needs you know industry doesn't care about uh, it is your feasibility or not if you do that your solution is going to end up in a journal or in your thesis book it is not going to be useful to them so this is where i keep on challenging right and again when i say this you can pick up some assumptions or you can pick up some approximations which you think is relevant to them but that has gone that can have certain offshoots on what is pertinent to them as well. So, uh, addressing them or taking a holistic perspective is very important. Again, you know, uh, my standard statement is if you have only one tool with you and if that tool is a hammer, every problem in the world appears like a nail's head. If you are able to understand their problems better, you will be able to pick up the tools which are required for them. There are a lot of things which are happening you know I have seen this is in very close quarters one is about the technology part of it and the second is about there are several things which are happening which the uh, understanding of the common man is very different than what we can understand uh, in recent times uh, uh, manufacturing in Indian railways has gone uh, exceptionally has improved exceptionally well which we don't speak about when we speak about one Bharat, one train that we see in practice we are speaking about that apart from that we have started expo uh, exporting uh, you know our we have significantly increased our manufacturing uh, capacity of our uh, rail coaches you know so how did we improve that manufacturing capacity here you know your typical private organization 
struggles to improve their increase their manufacturing capacity we say uh, indian railways as a as a bureaucratic as a hierarchical organization government organization government organization has got their own ways of operating their own you know ways of operating how they have increased their manufacturing capacity did they invest anything what did they do did they do some process improvement what did they do so these are some of the things that we should focus upon we speak about um, you know ppps and foreign direct investment some of the ppp models are the ftas which uh, some of our government organizations has done that is again for example railways railways has done with uh, alstom which is a very phenomenal which is a very creative and the most innovative ppp how do you how do you uh, uh, kind of uh, transform an organization uh, to to become a very progressive and a competitive organization this is something not a citizen can answer not a citizen will un- understand a common man may not be able to understand and this is where i think our role lies in we can bring up a fresh perspective into that how somebody is able to uh, improvise something or where there is a scope for scope for improvement for something can it be used for some somewhere else can it be used for uh, you know again not from from the indian context this is something that we should tell the world this is something that we should tell the world and uh, so our role is very big